Tornado Alley, a section of the Midwest ravaged each year by hundreds of thunderstorms and twisters. Most people seek shelter from these deadly acts of Mother Nature. But Jack, Thunderhead Corso, and Tim Dorr venture into the heart of these storms, risking their lives to capture them on film. Some people might call them crazy. They call themselves storm chasers. I've been storm chasing for a good 20-something years. I started in the mid-70s. I went out with my wife storm chasing on a honeymoon, and I've been hooked ever since. I started storm chasing in 1984. Um, I'd always been interested in storms. I'd always gone in the front porch of the house to look at them. I kind of contacted Jack after that, and it's been the, the best hobby, the most exciting thing I've ever done. Oh, we came really close to me, huh? Yeah, first... Come on ahead now. Come on, come on. Overhead. Build that. Take him out. You have to have a very strong dedication and a true love for thunderstorms to partake something like this. It's something just to say, just to try to get a picture. And it's not too many people who will risk their lives to get a good shot of a nice thunderstorm structure. Most people may head for the beach, but Jack and Tim take their vacation on the road, pitting themselves against nature's fury. They leave behind their jobs to drive thousands of miles, guided only by shifting winds and their own intuition. Each day brings adventure and new hopes of crossing paths with an elusive tornado. That might be something there. That might be something right there. Look, look at it go. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That could be a tornado. I'm filming it. That. Oh, that's a tornado. That. Very close to being a tornado. Watch the keys. Grab it, grab it. Possible developing tornado. Yeah, a downfall boundary. That uh, was close, though, huh? It's big, though. Yeah. We don't do this just to take unnecessary risks with our lives and be able to walk away. We don't do this for money. We do this because we just love the weather and we love coming back with pictures of the most dangerous and awesome cloud formations and weather in the world. Now this is what we're supposed to see. If I have a bad day where I don't see tornadoes, but I have a good shelf cloud or a wall cloud or a combination shot of lightning in front of a rainbow or a beautiful amber. That makes my day. I'm going to hang with this guy a little bit more, just a little bit more. Every day routine dictates that we, you know, we both go, we both have, have jobs and that kind of thing, and we're both pretty much know what our schedule might be like a week from today or a week from tomorrow. But out here, it's really, it's really neat because you really don't know where we're going to be. We could be in Lubbock one day, Amarillo the next, Oklahoma City the next, and we, we start the day out, we go where the storms take us. We don't know where we're going to have to set up shop at the end of the day, what hotel we're going to be staying at. So that degree of unpredictability is kind of neat uh, as far as for that two and a half weeks. I seen lightning yes, uh, right over that little clump of trees. Okay. There's a lot of mosquitoes around here. That's why I'm getting a coat on. Mm -hmm. So our strategy is to look at the storm as it gets darker and see where the lightning will be. Try to get in there and get some close shots of it. Right now it looks like some of the lightning is down the road here. We got some over here too, so it's probably not severe. But we're gonna have some good lightning out of it. Let's hope and pray that we get some. Let's do it. That's why we're here and we're there. Well, we technically haven't gotten picture of all the freak things that happen in nature 
One of the most hair-raising is lightning. See the lights coming across from the camera. Car keys are in my pocket. Thank God. Activity, no risk, and high pressures have settled in for a couple of days. We have other swamp chasing friends we'll visit, and we'll stop at weather museums and talk and weather so and socialize a little. It's 93 in Lubbock. This area, right? Yeah, right. Yes. right you see the yeah. cold days over in, in, in Northwest Kansas. This, right. is, this place is so cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is neat. How long have you been here? National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning effective until 4 30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. 3.44 p.m., Doppler radar showed a developing tornado 8 miles northeast, moving east at 20 miles an hour. Take immediate safe shelter from this storm. Finally, two weeks into the chase, Jack and Tim get the chance to go face to face with one of nature's most destructive forces. back in 1991. This tornado formed as a dust bowl right beside the road, similar to the one we've seen the other day. However, in the course of seven minutes, it went from a dust bowl to a massive F3 tornado. It was on the ground for like 50 minutes, which is something that uh, neither of us ever thought we would see. You're staying out in, in the Great Plains looking at something that basically is able to take you up, pick you up, chew you up and spit you out without even giving it a second thought. You're confronting the most dangerous, most magnificent force on Earth. And you're there to basically pick its pocket, get that picture, and walk away and survive doing it. And that's the thrill of it. I think the, uh, the neat thing is the memories we have. I mean, we can go back you know, five, six years and discuss storms and have common pictures that we've taken. So it's really pretty amazing to catch a one-in-a-lifetime experience on film, and it's totally unique. I've seen pictures of friends' storms, which some of them far outrank mine. So I know there's always another storm out there to be bagged and slapped on the wall. I could be 80 years old, and I'll never, never have enough.